Okay, uh, uncivilized anatomy, we're gonna do the back musculature or sort of the um, dorsal aspect of the torso or the trunk. There are several layers of muscle and um, we're gonna go through those uh, briefly. So uh, what I've drawn here is this is the uh, occiput, the back of the skull and some of the cervical vertebra. You're looking at the spinous processes uh, here and then the transverse process and then just the outline of uh, the body. So it's like looking at the, the back of someone's neck like this. Right, that'll be helpful in a minute. So let's talk about the muscles. Uh, they're going to run mainly longitudinally uh, from uh, along the, the torso from the, the sacrum and ilium or the pelvis. And they're going to run up to and insert along the, verte uh, the vertebral column, uh, the ribs, uh, the neck, and onto the skull. So you're going to run a long way uh, the length of the body, uh, the torso. The posterior musculature and then it is divided into um, several uh, categories. We're going to talk about superficial back muscles and then the intrinsic back muscles. The intrinsic back muscles are the ones that are going to operate on the vertebral column, uh, the, the spine, um, backbone uh, itself in the back and torso. Um, and the superficial back muscles are just located in the region of the back. Uh, but they operate mainly on the uh, upper extremity. And then we're going to talk about them in layers or groupings from superficial to deep. We'll talk about that. For the most part, uh, all of the back muscles, the intrinsic back muscles, are going to be innervated by the uh, segmental dorsal uh, ramus of the um, spinal nerves that they come out. So you don't really have to memorize individual nerves. For some of the superficial muscles, uh, I'll explain the uh, innervation as we go. I'm not going to go into the actions of the individual muscles. This is sort of an overview video so you can start to learn the muscles and then um, start attaching their actions to them as you go. So the, let's talk about superficial muscles. The uh, superficial muscles uh, consist of the trapezius. So let's, let's draw a little, a little person we're looking at uh, from uh, behind. There's this little, little arms. Right? And this is the, the back of the head, so we'll put some hair. Okay. Alright, so superficial back muscles. The main one is going to be one from the, the uh, base of the skull. It's going to run out along the shoulder and then down the uh, attaching along the um, vertebral column. In this sort of diamond shape, there's actually a right and a left. So when they're put together, they give this trapezoid shape. That is your uh, trapezius muscle, the trapezium. This is going to get its innervation from uh, cranial nerve 11, so the spinal accessory nerve. Uh, trapezius muscle, that's the one that makes the shoulders. And it helps you shrug and rotate and extend and move uh, your head and shoulder joint around. But it mainly operates on the, uh, the head, the neck, and some uh, with the shoulder girdle. So it is a, an extrinsic or superficial back muscle. There is a large, uh, very wide muscle that runs along the lower portion of the back, and it comes up and inserts on the uh, upper extremity, on your humerus, on the um, medial lip of the intertubercular groove, on the anterior surface of the humerus to extend and internally rotate. It's the wide muscle of the back, and it is known as the latissimus dorsi muscle, right? The latissimus dorsi. The, uh, Latissimus uh, dorsi is going to be innervated by the uh, thracodorsal nerve. The um, superficial back muscles that cover the entire back, the trapezius and the lat, uh, latissimus, are sometimes shortened by the, the, the gym rats and the, uh, the bench press bros as traps and lats. So when you hear traps and lats, they're talking about the superficial back muscles, which are the uh, trapezius and the latissimus dorsi. Now, still in that category of superficial back muscle, but deep to these two uh, sets of muscles are going to be a couple more that are some books call them superficial back muscle. Uh, technically, they're extrinsic back muscles, but we're going to talk about those. So on your rib cage, you've got your uh, your scapula, and then your your arm bone out here, and then the spinous processes of the thoracic vertebra. There, and then let's do the the neck as well. A few more SPs, and then there's the neck up here and a head. There are two more uh, extrinsic back muscles. They're located in the back region, but they don't work on the spinal column uh, necessarily. You're going to have um, 
a muscle here. It's actually a major and a minor that run from the medial uh, border uh, or vertebral border of the scapula to the spinous processes. And you can see that it is vaguely rhombus shaped. Okay. So, um, it's called the rhomboid. You have a major and a minor, right? A major and a minor. Um, these muscles are going to attach uh, your shoulder blade uh, to your spine. They help retract your shoulder blade. And they're actually going to be continuous with the fibers of the serratus anterior muscle, which is more of an axillary upper extremity muscle that attaches along the front. And we'll, we'll get to that later and how that sling uh, keeps that vertebral edge of the, the vertebra between those two muscles. Rhomboids kind of offset the, the pectoralis in the front uh, when keeping your shoulder girdle in place. Really important muscle. Off of the uh, corner of the scapula, so right at the base of the scapular spine, so you find your acromion and you can palpate along the spine of the scapula. There's that little suprascapular notch. The spine of the scapula at the base of the scapular spine and at that sort of uh, superior medial corner aspect of the scapula is another muscle that uh, runs up and inserts into uh, the vertebra of the neck. And this muscle is called, well, I should have wrote this down, rhomboids. Rhomboids, major and minor. And this muscle is called the levator scapulae muscle. This is a very important muscle. What do you think it does? Well, nobody's here to answer me. What do you think it does um, is action from the name. It, it, it levates or elevates the scapula. It helps to move the scapula up along its medial uh, aspect, uh, either um, um, elevating or depress, uh, relaxing to depress the scapula. But it's inserted on the cervical vertebra, which are themselves mobile. Uh, osseous unit. So what happens a lot of times is both ends of this muscle are not quite as uh, stable or more um, stay uh, mobile like with a, a pec, you know, the large torso moving the arm. This one's just got that little neck, set of neck bones to attach to. Uh, a lot of times you'll get cramps or spasms, uh, myospasms in the levator scapulae. It's so common that people wake up with it after sleeping when their head drops and that levator um, contracts real short and gets tight. It's referred to by old people uh, like me as a crick in your neck. So when you ever hear someone say, oh, I got a crick uh, in my neck from sleeping funny, they basically got a levator scapulae um, spasm, myospasm. They're pretty easy to treat if you know how, but we're not gonna get into that right now. Um, so those would be uh, ventral ramus of uh, C3 and Four for the levator scap. So those are your superficial or extrinsic back muscles, trapezius, latissimus dorsi, major, minor, rhomboid, and the levator scapulae muscle. So after we peel those off um, layer wise and we start to look down, let me draw a, there's a nose, a lips, a chin. So there's a head, there's a body laying down and we've got, right, all the way down to the pelvis and you got your sacrum here. We got some, uh, a body laying in a uh, prone position. Let's draw a table, lying on the table, little arms draped off, dead, All right? Okay. So we've got a body lying in a prone position and uh, sacrum head, and these are the, the curves of the vertebral um, column. Now you have your superficial, uh, your, your, uh, your traps, your traps, your rhomboids, your levator, and your latissimus up here. So these would be your superficial muscles. Now the layer below that, the next layer is going to be the erector spinae muscle, uh, muscles. And your, in the neck region, the splenius muscle. Okay, so that would be the next layer. Besides the superficial muscles, the next layer down would be your erector spinae muscles going deep. Below that layer, we're going to get the transverso spinalis. Transverso spinalis group. And then even deeper to that, the deepest, we're going to get uh, the segmental uh, muscles. All right? So that's basically how it's going to go. 
superficial or extrinsic back muscles, erector spinae, and the uh, splenius, the transversal spinalis, and then the, the uh, segmentals or intersegmental uh, muscles, the deepest. You could also, and sometimes I do, uh, on the transversal spinalis layer level, I will put the suboccipitals uh, in here They're at about the same uh, dissection level, but I'll include those, the suboccipital muscles uh, from C1, C2, and the, the base of the occiput. I'll include those when I do the, uh, the neck so we don't overload these. So remember that kind of layer-wise. Now let's look at uh, some of these muscles on our uh, cadaver. So as we go deeper, the uh, extrinsic shoulder mu uh, back muscles, then we get into the intrinsic back muscles, layered superficially as the splenius and erector spinae layer, the suboccipitals and the transversal spinalis group, and then the deepest uh, segmentals. All right, so let's talk about each of those group, the intrinsic back muscles. So the erector spinae are going to run, let's do, uh, here's a pelvis, a sacrum, and a pelvis from behind. We've got lots of vertebra, doo -doo -doo, all the way up to uh, the back of the skull. And then of course there are some ribs here and about that layer. So your erector spinae group are gonna run from um, the, the, the tendinous origin along the surface of the sacrum, some of the ilia along the ilia crest and the, the lumbar area as a big thoracolumbar or thoracodorsal uh, fascia. And from that, um, that uh, uh, plate, that large aponeurosis, that tendinous origin, you're gonna have your erector spinae run up along the spine. Of course, their job through their name is to erect uh, the spine or hold you upright. And they're gonna be divided into uh, three groupings of muscle. The uh, lateral most group of muscle that's gonna run uh, the lowest is called the iliocostalis. Iliocostalis, okay? That's the iliocostalis group, and I'll come back to the subdivisions in a minute. The next uh, set of muscles are going to be the longest, and they're gonna end up running the entire length of the spine. They're gonna run in that little groove you find between the, when you're palpating, in that little valley between the, um, well, they all do really, transverse process and the spinous process. These are those round, ropey muscles you feel when you're palpating in the back, your patient standing upright, or if you're working with the cadaver, uh, you'll see them uh, along the back. And run all the way up to the, the skull. These, this longest group is called the longissimus. I know some people say the longissimus and give that a hard uh, j, uh, but it's, it's longissimus. Latin didn't have that j sound, longissimus. Uh, and these have some subdivisions as well, and we'll get to that in a, in a, in a moment. Now, running as close to um, the spinous processes, the most medial of these erector spinae uh, is a smaller group called the spinalis, right? The spinalis muscles, and they're going to be um, sort of subdivided. So remember from um, lateral to medial, you've got iliocostalis, longissimus, then spinalis. A uh, little mnemonic is, I love spaghetti. So that's kind of how you could remember that. I don't think it'd be too difficult to get a mnemonic for three muscles, but uh, you do you. So the iliocostalis, the longissimus, and, spinae, uh, and spinalis are arranged this way uh, in the long, the, along the long axis of the torso. And they can be subdivided according to their inferior to anterior uh, location. They're still uh, segmentally innervated by the dorsal primary rami of the spinal nerve, so it doesn't make much difference. As far as uh, action or innervation uh, or even identification, but sometimes they are grouped according to uh, their, their level moving up. Um, iliocostalis, for instance, has a, a iliocostalis lumborum section and a uh, thoracic section and a cervicus. Uh, sections. And those are basically going to indicate where the fibers that originate low are um, inserting uh, along the lower ribs, uh, the iliocostalis thoracus a little higher, and the iliocostalis uh, cervicus. Uh, it's going to reach all the way up to the, the neck uh, region. 
for their insertions. I'll go over this a little more detail in lab because it's kind of hard to explain with drawings. Uh, it's easier to see uh, on the cadaver. The longissimus is going to have, uh, by the way, the iliocostalis, because it's the, the base and most lateral muscle is kind of the widest, it's the only one with a lumborum uh, section. The longissimus is going to have uh, a thoracic, so a longissimus thoracus, a longissimus cervicus, and then with the longissimus, we're going to add a capitus. A capitus um, insertion. So it's actually going to insert along the base of the, the skull. Same thing with the spinalis. You're going to have a spinalis uh, thoracus, spinalis uh, cervicus, and spinalis uh, capitus uh, segments because they reach all the way up to the head of those medial two. The iliocostalis muscles only reach up to the uh, neck. So those are the, the divisions. You could say it's nine muscles because there's three subsets of each of the three muscles, but it's easiest at, at, a, at this sort of casual anatomy level or um, mid-level undergrad uh, anatomy level, just to remember the groupings, okay? Uh, iliocostalis, longissimus, spinalis. These are the superficial most layer of the intrinsic back muscles. Now, in the same plane of division, if you rewind and see my little cadaver head laying, these are the... Uh, the superficial most of the intrinsic back muscles, you've got a specialized set of muscles that are on the same plane of division as the uh, erector spinae that occur here in the neck. <clears throat> and you're going to have, it's basically uh, a large muscle, very large uh, and wide muscle that comes off of the, the vertebra, uh, the spinous processes, and that groove and insert on the, the base of the occiput in the skull. This wide, uh, very wide muscle in the back of the neck, and if you were to hold, uh, like you're pinching the nape of someone's neck, immediately deep to the uh, trapezius muscle, once that's been reflected, uh, dissected and reflected away, is this large muscle called a splenius. The splenius muscle. The splenius muscle has two divisions. It has a uh, splenius capitis, I think that's capitus, I put capitus earlier, but capitus, and a splenius uh, cervicus. Right. So the splenius capitus is going to uh, come from the, the, the skull, the occipital bone, and it's going to uh, arise or attach at its inferior end all the way from uh, C7, which is that largest vertebra right at the base of the neck, the vertebral prominence, C7, uh, down to about T4 or 5. All right, so along the spinous processes and of the T7 down about T4 to 5, and that wide muscle comes up to the um, occiput, that is the splenius capitus muscle. And then deep to that, uh, deep and medial to that muscle is running from C3, sorry, uh, T3 to about T6. So sort of right along the uh, origins of the splenius capitus uh, division. And then up to the first three uh, cervical vertebra is another aspect of this wide splenius muscle, and that would be your splenius cervicus. So it's a little more medial and a little deeper uh, to the splenius capitus division, but it's kind of considered in the same plane. You'll see it when we get in the lab, uh, unless you're not uh, a student, you're just at home watching this, then just, you know, Close your eyes and imagine. So this layer of muscle, splenius capitus, splenius cervicus, the uh, spinalis, the longissimus, and the iliocostalis are all in the same plane of uh, division. So the next layer down is gonna be called the transverso spinalis group. And that's gonna be fairly easy to remember because they run, so here's a spinous process the impression of, a, of the, the body, all right, because here's my disc between the vertebra, and I have the TPs, or the transverse processes, sticking out to the side. So you just could imagine, this would give you the impression that you're looking at the a spinal column uh, from the back, okay? And then, of course, where the, I'm not drawing the uh, lamina in here, or the pedicles, because one, I'm not that talented of an illustrator, and two, I think it just make my uh, drawing too busy. 
So the transversospinalis groups are going to be uh, muscles that are running from the transverse processes of various layer uh, levels of the vertebral column up to the spinous processes of other vertebrae, transversospinalis. So that's an easy group uh, to remember, and they are deep to the erectors. These are small muscles, fairly deep. Um, in the same plane of division, you'd get up into suboccipital muscles, but uh, rectus capitis uh, posterior and the uh, obliquus capitis. But we'll do those with um, neck muscles. I think that's a little more relevant that way. Um, so the transversal spinalis group, there, there's um, some insertion on the, the capitis. So we're going to talk about that as a subdivision in a, in a moment. So these groups that run from the transverse processes up to uh, the spinous processes of vertebra above them are called the semispinalis, right? The semispinalis muscle group. Now this group of transversal spinalis muscles, um, don't get that confused with the spinalis, which are part of the erector spinae group, which are large muscles, um, just because it says semi. Uh, it's kind of confusing, but these are transversal spinalis groups, and this has a subdivision because some of the semispinalis uh, insert on the the occiput. So you have semispinalis capitis, cervicus, and thoracic, right? Uh, thorax. So the semispinalis has these three divisions, and these are going to be muscles that run from a, a TP up to a spinous process or uh, the capitis, the occiput, and they're going to cover anywhere from four to six segments. So if you're looking deep and you find a muscle that's running from a transverse process and it goes up one, two, three, four, five, and it's covered that big span, it's a semispinalis um, subdivision of the transversal spinalis muscle group. And it depends on if it inserts in the capitis, the cervical region, or the, the thoracic vertebra, it would give you those. Uh, the next transverso should I draw one in there? I probably should. So we got one here, and let's say it inserts one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's say this is the, the bottom of our skull, our occiput, and we've got a muscle that runs and inserts all the way up here. I would label that semispinalis capitis, and this is my neck, so semispinalis cervicus. Okay? The next group is one called uh, multifidi, right? Or the multifidus. The multifidus is um, most well developed and most prominent in the lumbar regions, but it's going to run um, two to four segments. So let's say, pretend this is now the uh, lumbar vertebra. If I've got a transverse process, specifically the mammillary process of the TP laminar junction, you have a muscle rising from that, and I'm going one, two, three, and I've got this muscle that comes up here this far, then I know it's scanned, uh, spanned four sections, mostly in the lumbar. I would immediately label that uh, multifidus or multifidi muscle. The third set of transversal spinalis muscles are the rotatories. Right, the rotatories, they come in two flavors, uh, longus and brevis. These are the deepest, uh, they're right in that laminar groove, uh, right along the, the lamina. They're very small. Uh, your books, anatomy books, are going to tell you that their action is to rotate uh, the vertebra above it. Uh, maybe a little bit. I find that they're more um, easily explained, these teeny, 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 tiny muscles, as uh, proprioceptive. Uh, organs and inputs, but uh, you'll see when we get in the lab. So the rotaturies are only going to run one to two segments. If it covers two segments, it's a rotaturies longus. If it only covers the one segment, uh, the vertebra immediately above it, it would be a rotaturies uh, brevis. Let me grab another color. So we'll call these green. So let's say, um, especially in the thoracic region where the rotaturies are helping. Uh, well, we'll get to that in a bit. If I've got a transverse process and I've only run up just lateral to that multifidus muscle and I've inserted here, I've gone up on two segments, that would be a rotatory's longus. If I have uh, the muscle that's right next to it and it only runs up to the adjacent, to the, the immediately superior uh, vertebra, that would be a rotatory's 
brevis. <clears throat> so these muscles that run the entire length of the vertebral column from skull down to the lumbar are divided into semispinales, the three divisions according to insertion, four to six segments. The multifidi, mostly in the lumbar, well developed in the lumbar, run two to four segments. And the rotatories, either longus or brevis, one or two segments res uh, respectively. And these three are the transverso to spinalis, transverso spinalis group. Uh, same thing, uh, segmental dorsal primary ramus innervation. Now, if we go one deeper, so we're down all the way down, these are very small muscles, you'll find three more uh, interesting muscles. All right, so we've got our, our vertebra here. You're going to find, um, along with the supraspinous and interspinous ligaments, a sort of sandwich on each side of the spinalis, uh, the spinous process, you'll find a few muscle fibers that run between the spinous processes on the right and the left. Uh, and they're gonna be uh, interposed with those um, ligaments. We'll get to that in a bit. These are called the, this is the segmental, segmental muscle group. These are the segmentals. These are the interspinous, interspinous muscles. Makes sense, right? Interspinous muscles, the left and the right. On the transverse processes, you'll find a few muscle fibers that run uh, between them with adjacent vertebra. And there's actually two plates. There's an anterior, like, thin line of these and a, and a posterior thin line. These muscles would be called the inter, running between transversarii, or serii, right? The interspinous muscles, interspinalis, uh, and the intertransversary muscles. And then if I had some um, ribs, so if you've got ribs running out here, so in the thoracic area, you're going to find overlying these, these little uh, almost triangular shaped muscles, they're gonna run from the transverse processes. Uh, I need one more up here actually, one more transverse process. You're gonna find these muscles that run from the transverse process out to a uh, couple ribs below or the rib immediately below, right? And they form this sort of little, little triangle. They run out like this, right? From the, the, uh, the, as the uh, lateral aspect of the transverse processes. These muscles run out, you've got a brevis and a longus, one segment, two segments, uh, very similar to the rotatories. These muscles are called levator, Custom, right? Then there's a, a longus and a brevis, right? Now these definitely are um, proprioceptive muscles. I know the name is levator costarum, and your books will say what well, helps to elevate the ribs for the process. But um, at point of fact, it, it's not moving. I mean, when you breathe in, you've got gigantic uh, muscles that mobilize and move the rib cage. Some people say they're uh, accessory inspiratory muscles. I don't know about that. I think they probably uh, serve more of a purpose of sending back through their stretch receptors uh, and muscle spindles into your nervous system to give you an awareness of, you know, like if you're you're listing to port or something. Um, another muscle that I didn't actually draw in here, and I forgot to include it, is the um, posterior serratus. There's a posterior serratus inferior and a posterior serratus anterior. Um, it's very, very thin, and most of the cadavers, we're not going to see it, so maybe in the, the class I'll go back and add that in. I don't want to start the whole video over. So those are your uh, segmentals or intersegmental muscles. They run from the SPs of adjacent vertebra, the TPs of adjacent vertebra, and then out in the thoracic region, these little triangular shaped one to two segments out to the, the um, angle of the, the ribs. Those are the uh, levator costarum. So those are the back muscles as quickly and as superficially as I could do it. So uh, leave some comments below if I missed something or misspoke and uh, check out the next anatomy lecture in the list.